Okay, good morning and welcome to our uh, San Mateo Arboretum Society Wreath Annual Wreath Workshop. Um, it will last approximately, the demonstration will last approximately half an hour and then you can make, start making your wreaths. Um, my name is Pat Paquette. I'm on the education committee and also a volunteer in the greenhouse. Um, as the, as the demonstration goes on, feel free to ask questions and those on Zoom can um, hit the chat button and put your question there. Um, we will be sending out a, um, a copy of the presentation as well as an evaluation form in a few days. So keep an eye out for that and please um, use the evaluation forms. It helps us improve our programs. A um, little bit about what's going on in the Arboretum. Um, our nursery is open Saturday and Sunday from 12 to three. We have some nice Christmas gifts. Um, some of the volunteers are very crafty and we have some nice um, little Christmas decorations. Um, while you're in the park, visit the Rose Garden, the Butterfly and Hummingbird Garden. And we have two demonstration gardens, a sun garden and a shade garden, and then our lovely Victorian garden. Um, these are all maintained by, uh, by the um, Arboretum volunteers. Let's see, um, and I told you about the bathrooms. Um, okay, um, and there's refreshments. Please help yourself with refreshments. Um, Today's workshop presenter is Sue Carter, and Sue is a longtime uh, member of, of the Arboretum Society. She's been planning programs and seminars for quite a while, and we, we get a couple of years, <laughs> yeah, just a few, and we get some really good, um, good speakers, so check our website for what's coming next. We have um, a rose pruning seminar in January, and February we'll do a composting um, seminar. So, um, Let's see, what else? Um, I think that's probably about it. Um, if you have questions, feel free to uh, speak up at any time because some of you may be doing this for the first time. And um, Sue, I think, does a great job and I think you'll understand how to, how to put it together. So, Sue? Thank you, thank you Pat. Sure. And welcome everyone. And let's, let's get started. These are, these are really easy to make and I'm not a person that does a lot of crafts. So if I can do it, you can do it. So you all should have a frame, wire. Uh, everybody here at the pump house has a big spool. You at home have a, have a smaller spool of wire. So, and you all should have received uh, instructions on how to make a wreath. And then on the back side, it tells you how to make a bow and how to keep your wreath fresh. And also, as Pat mentioned, our upcoming, upcoming events. So you all have your greens. Now you may have large branches. And so what do you do with these? First, you wanna come down into manageable sizes of about oh, six, six to eight inches. The bigger, the longer your stems that you work with, you will make a bigger wreath, but it is harder to uh, secure. You really have to wind the wire around. And the heavier the branch, the more secure it has to be. So when you have a branch like this, you're just gonna trim it. All of these are good little pieces. You'll be doing additional trimming later, but this is just two. So here, oh, this is one nice piece. I'll cut it here. And then this is still a good piece. The rest can go to the trash. I like to work with something stiff as the base to give it some form. Um, but the cedar gives an entirely different look because it's going to be more, um, give you a much more relaxed look versus the redwood that has a really stiff. So make your selection and 
use what you, what you, what you think you're going to like. So again, this is a big branch of cedar. So we're going to be cutting it down into manageable sizes and then doing some trimming again later. And we had a lot of bay. So this bay, I can get several pieces out of it. And so six, six to eight inches long or a little longer. So how do you start? First, you find the end to the wire. You are not going to cut your wire until the end of the wreath. So you have a frame. The frame has these crossbars on it. You start by winding the end of the wire around where the crossbar, crossbar is. That's going to help secure it. If you put it here, it's going to slip. So this just keeps it tight. And that's one thing you want to remember when you're doing your wiring is pull it tight. So I think I said I like I always like to use redwood at the end. Start and so about three, four pieces, whatever you want. And so there's my there's my redwood. And I really like this cedar with the yellow on it. It brings some light into the wreath. So I've got a good clump here. I think I'm going to add some holly berries. I got this nice, nice branch of holly. And again, it's going to make one, two, three, four. Get four cuttings out of it. All the stems are at the same length. That way, when you wire it, you make sure that everything gets caught up in the wire. So I'm going to start out with this. Got my frame. Got the wire attached to it. I like to go, what you're going to do is you're going to be laying your clumps. You're going to make about seven, eight, maybe 10 bunches, depending on how big they are around. You're going to be laying, putting, wiring one on, and then just going all the way around till you finish. I find it usually takes about eight. So I'm here where the crossbar is. I'm just going to lay this down. I'm going to leave about two, three inches of stem. And then I will wire this on. And the, one of the most important things is to pull your wire tight. So went around, go around three or four times. Pulling the wire tight. I'll do my next group. More redwood. Yeah, how'd you get in there, your cedar? Now this bunch, I'm just going to do the redwood and the variegated cedar. I 
and lay it over the stems, hide the stems here. Take your spool of wire. Wires too far up. See where I want to position it? And wire it on. Pulling tight. About how many times do you wrap? Three or four times, Pat. And then I had this bunch already pre-made. So I'm doing berries and alternate ones, alternate clumps. Need to get the wire down. What was what was hap what was happening was the wire was way up here and it would start going around the top right. top of the bunch. So I'm going getting down closer to where the, the stems stems are. These large paddles are nice because it makes it easy to pull tight. Okay. And as you go along, you have to adjust. And at the end, you can adjust. You find things are lopsided. You can trim off. You can wire or hot glue more on. See how fast it is? To... So you're going to continue doing that all the way around. And when you get here, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to show you one that I made all except for the very last. So you see it's finished except for this one spot. So I've got my clump of greens here. I'm just going to slip them in, slip them under the first one that I put on. And wire it on. Now, I like to go clockwise on this. I'm right-handed. You may find it's easier if you go for some people who are left-handed, maybe easier to go counterclockwise. I don't know, I'm not left-handed, so. Okay. So to finish it, tie it off at the end, cut your, wire leave about six inches then you're going to just tie it off kind of thread it through the wire thread it under just like thread when you're tying on a uh, sewing on a button you just you're doing the same thing with the wire again kind of kind of pulling tight I do three, three, four times. It's easy to lose the green wire in amongst all this green. This is actually the hardest part for me. Just because I can't see the wire.
Now you can uh, might have gotten some pine cones. So pine cones, uh, the smaller, lighter ones, they can be hot glued on, or you can take your wire and just thread it underneath the little parts of the cone there. What do you call these little things on the cone? Petals. Huh? Petals. petals, the petals. Okay, the cone petals. <laughs> Thank you, <Petals>. Kevin. <laughs> And then you got your wire. Make sure it's uh, your wire's long enough so it can slip in and around the wreath. You can look for a bare spot, or you can just put them anywhere. The glue gun will take all the And. Again, I've lost the other wire. I can get it tight enough. You can kind of with the wire, you can kind of bend it around, reposition it. So you can add pine cones. Uh, so this is one I made earlier with magnolia and some redwood, and again my favorite variegated cedar. And I, some of you may have picked up some of the um, deciduous magnolia. Here. I see a bare spot up here that might be where I kind of want uh, where I'll put the ribbon, or you could put another pine cone. Any questions? How do you leave that pretty bow? That's coming. That's coming. That's coming. So, so for this one, so we get our ribbon at Costco. It's the best price. They've got a pretty good selection, and there's a lot on a roll. So you all should have gotten four yards of ribbon, which is plenty to make a bow. These, uh, this ribbon is all wired, so you can, very fine wire on the edges here. So you have directions on the back of your instruction sheet on how to make a bow, but it is really easy. The two things, you even, you can do it, Pat. You can see this ribbon, it's the same on both sides. This ribbon here is not. It's a little bit different technique. We're going to start with 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 the one that's same on both sides. So you're going to leave enough for your tail. And uh, hmm. you're going to make a loop. Bigger the loop, the bigger the bow. I'm going to do one. Maybe about three to four, three to four inches. All you do on these is you just go it back and forth, making how many ever many loops you want. I think I'll do maybe five on each side. Enough for a tail. And 
and put some water. And what happened to my wire? Use this one. You want to cut your wire long enough so it'll wrap around the wreath and you can secure it. Pinch it, wrap your wire tightly around the middle of the ribbon of your loops. Then you're just gonna pull it out. Put your hand inside to make it fuller. Two ends of wire, wrap it around your wreath. Fluff it up. Easy. I'm just going to cut this end. And you can you can give the ribbons a twist. Now, the two-sided ribbon. You'll do once one-sided. One Thank you, Pat. One, two. Okay, got it. I'll try to remember next time. So, do your first loop, and the other one we didn't. If you made it the way we did the other one. You'll get the back side. So all you have to do is when you pinch it, you give it a twist. Pinch and twist. This ribbon is very forgiving. You could just work with it a lot and it still will look good. One more, one more loop. And my wire. Again, just tight, a couple of twists. Okay, here I have one loop that's really long, one loop that's short. short. I didn't, I didn't uh, get it quite in the center. Do so you just give these, give these a little tug, pull them, even it out, adjust. Mm -hmm. 
you can do something a little bit different with the ends. Instead of a just a diagonal, you can do a just fold it in half this way. Makes about the same. And make it a like a chevron. Needs a little bit of adjusting, but basically that's it. Did one here earlier with a white ribbon. And I added a succulent. So you can add succulents to your. Huh? Yeah, I was going to. I don't I don't have a, a wreath to, to show you. Um, so to hang your wreaths, you can use a wreath hanger. You can tie some tie some extra wire onto it to make a hook. You can. Um, I have a brass hook on my front door, so I just hang the frame onto it. Uh, you can. Another way, if you leave enough ribbon, I'd say. Depending on how long, how long you want, you could use the matching ribbon to do a hanger. So all you do there is make a knot in the end. This isn't quite long enough, I think. Where were those pieces? We had some. Oh, well, actually, I'd already played with one. So this is the same as this. So I just made a knot in the end. And what you're going to do, you're going to just thread it through the wire frame, tuck it in, and then, oops, that's that. Let's start this again. You want to go through with this this side first. Now, otherwise, I was going to have the knot at the top. We don't want that. Huh? You're confusing I am confusing. I am conf I am confusing myself. Thank you. you anyway, I got it pretty good. It's not perfect, but anyway, you can use the ribbon then as a hanger. Any questions? Oh, you do hot glue things on. You see, I have some neat little. I have a wisteria in my garden, and it has all these seed pods. And the seed pods have been popping and dropping and opening up. And so this is what's left. And I thought, oh. They're really interesting. I tried spray painting one and I thought, well, it could look like icicles, but it was raining and I didn't get any more done. So. I have a glue gun here. And. I might just should have tried this glue gun first. It's not working. Oh, it's not hot yet. Thank you. There we go. But uh. Little glue on the end. And I'm just going to stick it in. Now you want to give it time to, you want to do this at the end. 
So you can let the glue set and it can stay. So we have lots of little pine cones and more of these wisteria pods. I bet if you look in your garden or when you're out walking, you can find interesting pods and different, different things to add. Any questions? Any questions from the Zoom crowd? Okay, so. let me look at my... Okay. If some of the pieces start to fall off, you just get the wire and wrap it around mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Like I said, you can add, if you if you find you have a, when you hang it up, we have a couple of wreath hangers here. Um, you take a look at it and you say, oh, boy, that side's got a lot. This doesn't have so much. So you either trim off that one side or you just wire on. These, I didn't have these in this morning. I had made this wreath the other day. I actually, this was, um, these are Nandina berries. I actually just stuck them in through the wire. So I just kind of turned them over and threaded them, threaded them through. Any more, any questions? Are we ready to go? Okay. So uh, all, anybody on the Zoom have any questions? Okay, so um, also on the back of your uh, how to make a wreath, it's also tells you best way to keep your wreath uh, fresh. If you hang it on your front door in the hot sun, it's not gonna last so long. It's better in a shaded cooler location and the berries do drop. So if you put it on your front door and you have a nice entry carpet, the berries might start dropping. So that's, that's something to, to, um, to think about. And um, we've been doing Zoom. This is our second year we've done our hybrid program. So we're uh, hoping to um, maybe next year do more in person. We think we that would be good. So if, if anybody's, if anybody's uh, interested in helping out with uh, any of our workshops or wreath workshops, what you do is you will be able to get the greens and uh, all the supplies you need to make your wreath with uh, no charge. But uh, anyway, just let me know. And uh, thank you, everyone. And thank you to the Parks Department. Without them doing this, we would not, we would not have the program. They didn't cut the greens for us. And uh, thank you to Kevin and to Pat and all the Education Committee who helped. Yeah, I don't think I can.